In this video, we're answering a common question that we get about DUI cases and specifically, how often did DUI cases go to trial and why? So let's take a step back and before we get there, let's take a look at the DUI process because it is long and it will help answer some of the questions if we can do a quick refresher as to how this works. Here we have kind of the structure, the tree, the branches of how a DUI case typically works. You have an arraignment, which is your initial court date. You're going to have a series of what are called pre-trial conferences. This is where a lot of the meat and potatoes of a DUI case are happening. There's a lot of conversation back and forth between a defense lawyer and a prosecutor. There's negotiations, there's interviews, there's a lot of things happening at each one of these pre-trial conferences. And then what ordinarily will happen in most DUI cases is they will plea out, meaning somebody will take a plea deal or they'll be dismissed or something will happen without it going to trial. If you take a step back and you look at the national numbers and the average of how many cases actually go to trial in criminal cases or across the board in really anything, it's actually a pretty significantly low number. It's somewhere between two to 5% of cases actually go to trial. The most uh, common result is people take a plea deal or they settle without going to trial. So you wanna keep that in mind that just by the numbers, by just the sheer statistics, the likelihood that your DUI case is gonna to go to trial is probably pretty low, just based on the numbers. Now, there are things that will impact whether or not going to trial is a good idea. Let's take a look at some of them. So up here I have listed the pros. When is it a good idea to take your DUI case to trial. And so number one is when you have good legal arguments. This is number one across the board for any criminal case, not just DUIs. If you've got good legal arguments, if you've got factual problems, if you have illegalities from the police, if you have illegal searches or seizures, if you have problems with Miranda, if you have problems with a bad traffic stop, there are a number of legal arguments that can result in a favorable verdict at a trial based on what you're able to do during this pretrial uh, settings that will set your case up to win favorably at trial. So you can go to trial, exercise those arguments, exercise those factual issues. If you have a good shot, you wanna take your case to trial. The other thing that is unfortunately kind of a reality in our judicial system is if the money makes sense for you to do it. So when you go to trial in their, in their uh, representation, some will not, most kind of, I would say more reputable firms don't do that because they understand that trial is, is, is a significant cost. And so they have to pass that along to a, to a, a, a person who's in need of an attorney. A uh, public defender, of course, doesn't have any of those concerns, but they will offer a different you know, caliber of representation. In, in my personal opinion, it will be something that will be sort of uh, equal to the amount of compensation that they are receiving. That's just how the system works. It's a reality. The other reason why money is important is because if you have the funds, you can hire expert witnesses. You can hire accident reconstructionists. You can retest the blood sample if that's a good strategy for you. So you want to take a look at that. Is it worth your money? Is it worth your time? Is it worth your investment in hiring all of these different expert uh, witnesses and all of these different resources in order to give you a favorable outcome? So you want to consider that. If money is really not an option, trial is a good way to go. The other thing that's important is that you're not going to get a harsher result. So let's say, for example, you're in a bad jurisdiction, and we'll talk about that down here, but, or you're in a jurisdiction that's a very good jurisdiction, and if you go to trial and you lose, it's not gonna be any harsher, meaning it's not going to be something that the judge is gonna be punishing you for. In criminal law, in, in many other uh, areas of law, we call it a trial tax. There are some judges, there are some courts, there are some prosecutors who, if you lose the case, they will ask for a substantially harsher penalty just based on the fact that you made them go to trial. Some judges just don't want it to happen in their courtrooms. I think it's totally unethical. You have a right to a trial, but some judges will do that. They'll give you a worse, worse penalty than you would get through a plea deal. So if there is no harsher penalty, or if you're in a good jurisdiction and you're gonna to wanna to rely on your attorney to answer that question for you, then you may not have any downside to going to trial. The other thing is if you have a favorable judge. 
that kind of ties into the prior point, but some judges are good. Some judges are defense friendly. There are not many of them, so don't rely on that. But let's say you do have a good judge, you have a good rapport, you're in front of a fair judge, and you think that you're gonna get some good rulings, that's gonna go into your equation as to whether or not you should take your case to trial and sort of break outside of that statistic. And finally, actually two other points. One, if you have a new prosecutor, somebody who's not very experienced, somebody who doesn't like DUI trials, somebody who, uh, for example, doesn't uh, really know what they're doing, or maybe it's their first DUI trial or they're brand new or something like that, or you have experience with that prosecutor and you know that science and, and gas chromatography is maybe not their forte, you may wanna take your case to trial. But really what it comes down to is you wanna take your case to trial when you've got nothing to lose. If you are going through this whole process and a prosecutor offers you a plea deal that is substantially the same as what you would get even if you took your case to trial and lost, you really have nothing to lose. Why wouldn't you take your case to trial, presuming that all of these other factors make sense? And there are many more, these are kind of the big ones. So if you've got nothing to lose, why would you go through this whole process and then just plead guilty at the very end? You could do that right here if you wanted to just go and plead guilty. Why not take your case to trial? If it's likely that it's not going to get any worse or that the penalties are going to be the same as if you took a plea deal, even if you went to trial and lost, and I'm not trying to advocate that you take your case to trial and lose, but sometimes that happens. And so you wanna make sure that you know what the risk and the reward and the cost benefit analysis looks like. So if you're in a position where you've got nothing to lose, you might wanna take your case to trial. Some of the cons that we see most often, why wouldn't you take your case to trial? As I mentioned, if you have something to lose, it's probably not a good idea to take your case to trial unless that's uh, unless the deal that you're getting is unacceptable. But if you already have something that is reduced, if you already have a certain level DUI and maybe it's reduced substantially, or maybe some of the, the penalties are going to be seriously mitigated based on this plea deal, you may not want to go to trial because you have a reduction, you have a benefit that if you go to trial and lose, you may actually have worse penalties. So you don't want to take a plea deal, go to trial and lose and end up in a worse situation. So that might be something that you want to consider. The other thing that you want to consider is if you are in front of a harsh judge. There are some judges who are notorious for imposing a trial tax. They will make your penalties harsher if you go to trial and lose. They will give you bad rulings. They don't want to sit in front of a jury, in front of a, a trial for two or three days and go through the process. If you're in that type of situation, you have to consider that as a reason not to go to trial. Similarly, like I mentioned previously, if money is an issue, if you, if you cannot afford a trial, if you cannot uh, hire you know, the expert witnesses that are necessary, that needs to go into your equation. Now, just because you may not be able to afford a, a trial or you may not be able to afford an expert witness or those things doesn't mean that you can't go to trial. If, you still, if all of these other factors don't matter and it's just a money thing, that can be solved. That's not that big of a deal, okay? There are ways that defense attorneys can get around not having an expert witness come into court and testify on our behalf. We, we can use the government's witness to our benefit. There are different techniques that we use, different lines of questioning that we can use to actually get the same similar style of questions out of them and use that in front of the jury. You just have to make sure you're understanding that. So if money's an issue, don't let that be something that totally discourages you from going that route, but it is a factor. Okay. The next one, thing we want to talk about is if you're in a bad jurisdiction. If you're in a really bad jurisdiction, there are some cities in Arizona, there are some judges, there are some locations where if you are pooling, if you're pulling from a pool of potential jurors, that in our experience just tends to be a bad jurisdiction. People from that area, they don't like alcohol, they don't like drinking, they don't like drinking and driving, they don't like anything. And so essentially they take a look at our client, the person who's being charged, as soon as they walk in the courtroom, even though they haven't pled guilty or found, been found guilty of anything, they look at that person and say, we believe that person's guilty without even hearing a shred of evidence. It's called a, being in a bad jurisdiction. You want to consider that. The other thing, if your case could get substantially worse, we've had situations where prosecutors have threatened to add additional charges or charge new crimes. And so if you take your case to trial and they make that threat, they say, we're going to make this worse on you if you decide you want to go to trial or reject this plea deal, you need to consider that because you don't want to end up in a bad situation. So the long and short of this, the reality is most DUI cases don't go to trial. 
There are a lot of attorneys who take DUI cases and never go to trial because they don't consider themselves trial attorneys. They don't feel confident in their abilities at trial. They just don't want to do them. Uh, there's a number of reasons why. We don't do that at our office. We love going to trial. We became defense lawyers to push the process and to take cases to trial, not go through all of this so we can just walk out at the end and plead guilty. So if this sounds like this might be a question that's applicable to you or your case, you wanna sit down with my team, give our office a call. We'll schedule a free case evaluation. We'll walk you through this process. Thanks for watching.